Welcome to the video, peasants. Do you ever look at modern fashion and think, eh, I want to look like I'm an NPC in some fantasy world, that I'm about to go adventuring in some cursed forest and befriend some dragons or something? Well, me too. A couple of years ago, somewhere in the pandemic, I decided I just don't have time to give a damn what society deems socially acceptable to wear outside. So I brought myself a cloak and it was the best decision I ever made. I've been slowly trying to introduce more fantastical elements into my wardrobe since then, but because I'm so edgy and cool and I only wear black, I do sometimes look like a fantasy character, but definitely an evil one. It's easier if I just show you. Here's a brief fashion montage for your viewing pleasure. While this is definitely a look, it's not a vibe I want to give off every single day and I've had some really awesome bed sheets knocking around. So I decided... to add a bit of colour. Just a little bit. I set out to make two corset tops, you know, the ones that everyone and their granddad has made. One that looks like a plate of armour because I thought that was a cool idea. And one that's reversible so I have options. Two for the price of one. Versatility, we love that. I had made one of these last year for a prompt list. It was a bit rushed, obviously, on my first go, so it needs work. So I wanted to take this as a learning opportunity, sort of perfect something a little bit and build with what I've learned. So that's why the two designs look a little different. I'll be using a pattern for the reversible one and trying to update the pattern myself a little bit for the arm one. This project spiraled out of control pretty quickly, but, um, We'll get to that. This was a late spring project for me, early summer. I meant to post this video a while ago, but I suddenly had to move and all my plans went out the window. And now here we are, everything worked out. Cutting out fabric is my least favorite thing to do in any project. It's so time consuming and really boring. And it's basically the entire first half of this project. Here's some footage of me cutting out these pieces in 100% real time. Out the same pieces for one side of the stays, the interfacing that goes inside, and then I used my entire half brain cell to figure out how to cut the pattern so it would be reversible, so it would be the other way around. So that's that's the same, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's gonna be right on that side. Hmm. I don't know why it was so much for my brain to handle, it was really quite straightforward, but I also didn't want to mess it up and have to cut it out again. And I didn't screw it up, whoopee! For the armour inspired stays, I put on my big boy pants and I tried to make the pattern myself. I used the original pattern as a base, so it probably doesn't even count. This is the first time in my life I've ever done a mock-up for a project, but I wasn't sure I had enough fabric for even one of these things, so I guess I'm being responsible now. I cut out the dip in the back using the front piece of the original design and completely winged it with where to raise the front bit to. I did try and make it higher than it needed to be so I could cut it down if I needed to. The reason I had it in my head that I had to add space on the front panel where the lace goes in the original design, but I think I would have been fine just leaving it as is and letting the lace do the work on the back. I just thought the different shapes around the bust might be a problem, but I don't know what to tell you, man. I've not made a lot of clothes. As you can see, adding all that extra space on the front was completely unnecessary. Looking at it on, I did think I might have to add space on the back of the stage instead. Looking at the final design, I think it was fine the way it was, and it was probably the wrong call, but it's not too much harm done. I also completely forgot in the design I wanted the stays to come to a point at the front because I thought that looked more armoury. And then, genius that I am, realised that two of the patterns already had a point on them, but at least I could use that to get the right angle. The 
those changes had it looking a lot better. I just had to pull it in a little bit at the front, but honestly, I don't think that's 100% fixed in the end result. Have you noticed that I'm saying that a lot? Huh, I wonder how it turned out. At this point, I probably should have done another mock-up to finalise everything and make sure everything worked, but I didn't want to do that. So I straight up just cut out the lining and used that as the final mock-up. Turns out I didn't have enough trousers, I mean fabric, to finish this thing, so I ended up having to have a seam running through the middle of the chest plate. It wasn't exactly what I was going for, but there are some examples of chest plates looking like this, so I decided it would do. And then it was basically just time to sew it all together. Perfect signs. Don't even worry about it. So for the shirt I started... Wait, what? Yeah, you know how I said this project kind of spiralled out of control? Well, I was thinking that I have a lot of puffy shirts. I absolutely love them. They're my favourite thing to have in a wardrobe. I would wear them every day, but... They're all black. Whenever I see this sort of romantic lead, Pirates of the Caribbean, Aramis from the BBC TV show of the Musketeers, dirty beige sort of puppy sleeve shirt, I go absolutely feral. I must have one. And they don't make people look evil. So I decided this is it. I'm doing it. Now is the time to make one. Now I'm not a complete lunatic. I can't in good conscience have white shirts in my wardrobe. Besides, that's not nearly fantastical enough. I need it to look nasty. Like I've been sleeping under rocks while I explore the monster-filled wilderness, or cleaning the stables out lest the rich men put me in the stocks. I had some white cotton bed sheets, but I wanted to give it that old, tiny, parchment-like colour. At first I thought, easy, just use coffee or tea. Once more, however, I was a moron. I got into my head about not doing enough. I just wanted to make sure the colours took and didn't wash out. So I thought, play it safe. Money will solve everything. So I brought some brown dye labelled espresso, which I did not take as a sign. So I mixed the tiniest amount together to try and get the lightest shade I possibly could out of it. Just drying my flesh coloured squares on the lawn. While I was waiting for them to dry and hoping they would miraculously stop being flesh coloured, I got to work cutting out the actual pieces for the shirt. I made diligent notes after watching Morgan Donna's video on it and was way too anxious about committing to cutting out the fabric when it's literally just rectangles. I mean it's so easy, I definitely recommend it if you're looking for an easy project to start on or you just really want a puffy shirt. Yeah, obviously the store brought dye didn't work. The natural methods are far superior. I knew this deep down, but I was in the craft store. I saw the dye. I have no impulse control. Anyway, we're dyeing them with coffee now. I used a similar shirt to mark out how big the neck hole needed to be, just to be sure, and I sewed my rectangles together. I expected sewing the seams to be the worst part, but it was oddly satisfying. Yeah. 
It would have been sensible to gather the sleeve onto the cuff before sewing the sleeve shut, but I am a fool and I was too excited about sleeves, so I just went straight into it without thinking. I managed to sew one half of the cuff down with the machine, but to keep control on how neat it was, I folded it over, closed the cuff around the gather, and hand sewed it on myself. It was pretty relaxing and I like how it turned out, so no loss really. At this point I became drunk with power and I thought, why stop at making two stays in a shirt when you could have more shirts? There's this different kind of puffy sleeve shirt I've always wanted where it sort of lands in three different puffs. And what the hell, I was basically a sewing god at this point. I can figure out that pattern. It's basically just three rectangles instead of one, right? I did use an old t-shirt sleeve as a base for the first puff. It would have been better if I had a pattern for this bit, admittedly, but I had the right general idea on how to make it voluminous. It just needs some tweaking. In this beautiful shot here, you can clearly see me using a piece of elastic to measure where I wanted the puffs to land on my arms. I didn't end up using the elastic in the sleeve, but that would be another way to do it, and I might try it next time. It was pretty easy to sew together, it really was all rectangles, so, you know, nothing fancy. I gathered each section of the sleeve into these little rectangles and folded them over so the edges were clean. After that I sewed them closed and attached them like regular sleeves. I did also add gussets to the sleeves for more movement. I should have made the main shirt bigger but I only had limited fabric and I was dead set on making two shirts. At this point I had a lot of hand sewing to do. I could have tried to put the trim on a reversible corset by machine but I didn't trust myself to do that and have it look the same on both sides and I decided that it would look a little more authentic to fantasy lifestyle to have it hand sewn. I'd also make sure that I was definitely catching the fabric on both sides because I made that mistake before as well as generally having more control over where things are going. I used the same method for the trim on the arm corset too but mainly because the fabric for that was not ideal. I was aware this was going to take forever so the only way to do it was to set up a cosy atmosphere, my fantasy shows, my fantasy beer and power through it. No, I did not finish sewing all the trim that night, but we made a dent in it. I hand embroidered where the lace goes on the reversible corset, just to tie it all together, in the same logic of having that fancy-esque old tiny hand sewn look. I think in general it just looks a bit nicer than metal on this one. The armor corset, however, is all about metal, and I've never used grommets before, so it was the perfect project to try it out on. It was hammer time. 
This one's really fun to do. Did I screw it up? Yeah. Does it look like garbage? Yeah. Will it even hold it together? Well, like my life, we'll have to see. Now, it says put the ridge side down on this one. Problem is, there's ridges on both sides. So, I cannot remember which way I've already been doing it. I think that way. There's, I did one side, there's pros and cons on both. Uh, it looks like absolute garbage. I mean, that's hilarious. It'll do the job, I think. It's way too far away, but that's because it was never gonna go through jogging bottoms. As long as it ties it together, I don't really care. And I get to hit things. What more can a boy need? We must assume, anyway. Well, uh, <laughs> forgot to put the other one on for that, like a fool. here because my camera ran out of everything when I was filming earlier. This was definitely a project with a lot of learning involved which was kind of the entire point so it doesn't really matter. I do think I got maybe two, two and a half wearable outfits out of it. I would like to make this armour corset again once I can get my grubby little hands on some better material. I will definitely be doing this three puff sleeve shirt again, um, try some different variations of that. This whole project didn't actually take that long. I think if I had had a couple of days or a week where I could give it 100%, I would have been able to smash it out. It just became a bit spread out with everything going on. So if you want to add a bunch of different stuff to your wardrobe, I think this is a really easy way to do it. Let's talk about my thoughts then, shall we? I am really happy with the reversible stays corset thing. I think I really improved on the one I had made last year. It got a little neater, I think it's a bit more finished. Um, so super happy with that. And the basic puffy sleeve shirt, I mean, it was really simple and I love it. I'm gonna make so many more. I am unstoppable now. This, however, uh, I think you can see is a bit of a shambles, the stuff that I adapted from the patterns. Yeah. I think I had the right idea for the armoured corset. It is just terrible material. It's really stretchy. Look, this is the front layer coming off that, you know, I'm gonna ruin it, but I don't mind. I wanted a bit more structure on the trim to sort of give it rigid, fake metal kind of look. But yeah, no, I think I, I learned a lot with it. And I think having made this, when I go and make another one with better materials, it's gonna be pretty, plain sailing. I don't actually get out of my pyjamas that often so I probably will make another one of these eventually but you know no rush. I definitely am going to try and make this shirt again probably a bit sooner. I think I definitely need a pattern for this first puffy sleeve. There's not really much to it at all and I think it's falling at the wrong point on my shoulder. The second one I know I got the gist but it's longer than it should be and this was really tight you can see on this one i had to cut it open to even fit my hands through yeah bit of a mess this one i'm not even sure it's giving the fantastical vibe i was hoping for i think i look more like 
I'm going to open a barber shop above a pie store and maybe get up to some nefarious activities there. Which, you know, I can get on board with sometimes, but it's not what I wanted from this shirt, so I will try and make it again, refine it a little bit. So that's that. I hope this video was interesting. I sort of fell out of love with it eventually because I did spend way longer than I intended to on it. It is just clothes, half of which didn't end up that great, but like I say, it was to learn and I'm happy I did it and I will be making more of my own clothes. I am actually going to start posting videos regularly now, so please like and subscribe if you want to see future projects, some of which will fail, some of which won't, I'm sure. I have a lot of things planned, there's a lot of things I'm working on, I'm currently surrounded by half-finished projects, so. so they will be seen by those internet eyeballs of yours. They're very beautiful. So, if we have learned anything from this, let it be that don't let anything, be it money or your ability to sew at all, stop you from making your own clothes. It's easy. Make things. Be creative. Okay, bye! Did that make any sense? I don't know.